and welcome to session number 37, is that right? I <laughs> You I should believe that's right. Me. Oh no! Oh, come on. I didn't that's put true. the right one in the. We're Twitch only one thousand and three hundred sessions away. Ah, uh, well, that's up to you guys. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that way, but it could be that way. Yeah, just a few excursions to really explore the space, you know, for a thousand episodes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I mean, they have just discovered Ladaria, but like, what about all the other continents? That what about Second Ladaria? <laughs> <laughs> Proto Ladaria. Neo Ladaria. Anyways, while you guys think about possibilities, let me bring you to the TTS table. There we go. Uh, who's drawing faces on, like, the main. Who's Purple did it! Purple. Purple. Green's looking kind of sus. Green. <laughs> green does look sus. I'm going to ask Green with telling us what happened last time. It won't be me though, oh. because I hear something. <laughs> There's something stirring within Pontifex's <gasps> backpack. What? Behold, I live anew. It is I, the rotting Uplu within Pontifex's <laughs> backpack. I have evolved sentience, and I am now an ascended being greater than even the Plurnan deities. Death has no hold of my fruiting body. One recent day, he placed his new wand in the same bag as me, and I was granted sight, hearing, and the ability to speak to you now. <laughs> to give you a recap, the ones who carry me have just fought against a group of mechanical snakes. Upon destroying their outer shells, the snakes shed their skin, and new mechanical snakes took their place. This happened once again until all the mechanical snakes were destroyed. As you can surely guess, the initials on the machines were the same as usual. O dot TH likely standing for Orm Tinheart. The group that carries me then headed back to Simlaelon, where they said goodbye to Fortis before retrieving Saskarin from his prison cell. They interrogated him once again, and he seemed to be truly sorry for what he has done. Saskarin offered to take the party to Orm Tinhart, who he said is nearby, and Pontifex was reading his mind, and so he could get a visual image of what Orm Tinhart supposedly looked like, as well as his current whereabouts, possibly. This place where there is a, a door, not... Uh, connected to any sort of walls. And so the party began to make preparations to finally deal with this problem that has plagued them throughout their entire adventure thus far. Now I return to my dormant state and rest until the opportune moment. <laughs> Thank you, Saint Shintuplu. He was evolving even as he spoke. Yeah. <laughs> he started his, stitching. His voice changed entirely. <laughs> <laughs> because doing this for a long time is not fun. It's not easy. It's not. <laughs> okay, here's your inspiration die. Uh, Thank I'm, I'm, you. Going, I'm going to put it in Pontifex's backpack. No. <laughs> so you can keep it here. Um, and yeah, let's uh, jump right back in. We're currently still in Simlielon. <clears throat> the uh, you have just finished talking to Saskarin, and I have <coughs> excuse me, I have a tiny, tiny correction. Uh, boom, as to uh, oh. something. <laughs> that uh, has been mentioned yesterday because I oh god <clears throat> it's gonna take me a few more minutes for my throat to clear uh, excuse me 
Uh, but it was more correction to some information I've given you guys uh, uh, last time, which was two days ago. So it's early enough that I can retcon whatever I want and you can't stop me. Um, <laughs> but I have... Uh, how do I put this? I have updated notes uh, on uh, what Ormontian Hearts looks like. <laughs> he actually is a halfling. Yeah, yeah, he's actually a halfling, and uh, he goes by a different name. No, so I can tell you um, that he has red hair and beard, um, and the the way the the beard is uh, braided uh, is that he has his two large beards on both sides, on the right, on the right, and on, 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 and on the left, and those are exceptionally long. Um, he has, uh, um, he has blue eyes, and, and the, the limbs he's missing are both his left arm and his left uh, leg. And those are the, the, the ones that are, uh, that are mechanical. Uh, yeah. Alright, that's what I've got. Mm, everything else is good. How long a beard are we talking about? Like, uh, uh, those two braids would be long enough to touch the ground. Ripping hazard. Keep that in mind. <laughs> no, they're... They're actually prehensile. They're like additional <laughs> limbs. <laughs> I was cleaning my glasses and long story short... Now they're dirtier. I swear I've seen this in an, in an anime somewhere. What, prehensile beard prehensile phalanges? Hair. Oh wait, it's not an anime. Ha! I remember. Uh, sort of, yeah. Oh man, Andy, like, <laughs> Andy likes to machines. The yeah. <laughs> oh dang. She-Ra. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Mm. Mm -hmm. What would you guys like to do? Uh, you are currently inside of your room. Uh, that, that is basically your own private room with your own names on it. Uh, uh, within the dragon wagon. Uh, Saskaren, still bound, but at least free to speak. Uh, sitting uh, on, on the bed where... Uh, where Casimir has left him. Uh, you have just uh, bribed, ca uh, bribed Casimir into coming with you in, in, uh, on this additional adventure. And, and the plan is to head off and see where Saskarian takes you and come back uh, uh, just in time for the summer solstice when the spellcasting competition is going to take place right here in Simlielon. So, um, any, any preparations? Do we want to get potions? Um, probably, right? Probably. Pip still has one potion of healing. Yeah, I have one potion of healing. Sekul has one. Well, okay. Well, oh, cool. That's that's pretty good. <clears throat> I know Pip wanted to get food. Uh, yes, yes. Pip would get uh. I guess a platter of fresh seafood for Saskarin. Okay. You can just count at this, like, the, the price of rations, so five silver. Uh, speaking of rations, should probably pick some of those up as well, because I'm running low. So I'll just do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can get those at a, a normal price as well, like I just said. Hey! Uh, it sounds like you guys might be <laughs> ready. Um, yeah. Pip, when you, when you come back uh, with the fresh seafood, um, the, the, the freshest you, you were able to, to get uh, in, in the city and you, uh, you bring it to Siskarian, um, do you free his hands? Um. Hmm. I don't know if that's a decision Pip would make on his own. Uh. 
I think, you know, Pip would would come back into ooh, Are we still keeping Saskaran in the room or did we take did we bring him out? No, no, we're bringing we're keeping him in the room, right? He's in the room this... um, like I just said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um well, Pip would just return to the room and uh lay the tray in front of him. If Saskaran is having like some difficulty eating it with his hands bound, then maybe he would look to the others like is it okay? Should we let him go? Tekka frees him from the ropes. Just no, no word spoken. Just freeze. freeze him. Uh, so Skaren was indeed uh, struggling, and as soon as as you take a reach for him, he he pulls back a little bit, uh, startled. But as you as you reach for the bindings and begin to undo them, uh, he relaxes a little bit, and the first first thing he does as soon as he's free is to lunge on the food. If he runs off, that is on you, Tekka. I hope you know that. I will be with Saskaria. Okay. I will take you to wash after your meal. Okay. I think it's on all of us to make sure that he stays under our control. No reason to get divisive. True. I'm, I still don't, I don't know. I've seen people in prison or in captive for a long time, and not all of them change as easy as he does. So who knows what a full meal and a good clean burst does. Just be I, aware. He seems to be a special case, but that we should... Remain aware that he can change back just as easily as he changed this time. How are you this fine keeping someone caged for weeks? Me? All of us. We are the reason the scared was in a cage. For this long. Yeah. Because we couldn't come to a decision. But the reason he is in a cage and he isn't a free man is because of his own action. I am sorry. Yeah, I know. It's, it, you said that. But I was just explaining to Tekka. It's not like I wanted him in the prison. But if someone can't be trusted or let me free, what other choice is there? This cannot be the solution again in the future. I will not accept it. Well, <clears throat> you heard it, Saskaran. Behave, please. So, uh, you trust me. Sure. He, he nods uh, to, to his own statement and resumes eating. To, to Pip, uh, he, he, he leans forward a little bit to the side. The, the, um, what little hair uh, he still has left, it's, uh, um, it's sticking to his face. Uh, uh, as, he, as he leans forward and says, This is mm, not good fish. Oh, um, what what kind of fish do you like? Fish in 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 dreams, it it is better. Um, I don't know how to get that. You sleep. Ah. Um. Do you mean to say that you survive off of what you eat in your dreams? Sometimes, if nobody see me.
Wait, what? How does that work? You eat in your dreams while you sleep. Mm -hmm. And then you don't feel hungry when you wake up? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, he's a he's a fey creature, right? So that, I mean, they're, I guess they get a lot from dreams. Mm. Fair. Alex just makes note of this. And uh, Suskiron finishes his meal. If you are done, I will take you to clean up. Then we will prepare for our journey. Shaky legs, Suskirin slides down from the mattress and uh, um, um, hunched forward a little bit with his, with his head down. Uh, he stands next to you. Yeah, is there like a, a wash basin on the first floor? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, yeah, the dragon wagon <laughs> provides. Uh, 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 such facilities. Uh, you do, yeah, you we don't need to go that. into detail unless mm -hmm. Saskarin mm -hmm. does anything in specific. Uh, Saskarin uh, does not. You see, he just seems to. Um... Uh, can you roll me a check for me, please? Uh, okay, handy. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna use one of my inspiration dice. Ooh. All right. Let's see here. Oh, that ended up in a place I can't see. <laughs> oh, oh, it's escaping. <laughs> so it's a seven. Still. Yeah, still not great. Seven plus three. Plus ten. three. Yeah. You doubled it. True. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to say with that, uh, Saskarin, uh, as far as you can see, you keep, you keep an eye on him. Uh, he doesn't seem to ever attempt or even consider escaping. Uh, and actually, as soon as he gets anywhere near water, uh, he he seems to, to enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> a, it, it, it takes a while to just wash off the, the smell that he's been carrying with him ever since you, you met him all the way back in the, in the, in the cave where you, where you found the Lady of the Land. Um, so, but some diligent scrubbing later, you, t you return to the party with a Siskarian who is uh, uh, still dressed in, in shabby, um, barely more than, uh, than rags, but uh, at least clean. And... Uh, Looking visibly more relaxed. Ah. Uh, and as everybody is ready to leave, um, by, by, by the time that uh, Teka and the Saskarin are back, and you all announce that it's time to go, Saskarin climbs back on the mattress that he was sitting on earlier, and lies down and says ah uh, ready oh we were hoping to go there in person so you know in this pauses. world oh we walk yeah uh, I can't follow you that way. Okay. And he climbs back down from the mattress. Um, s sl slow, but okay. How long does it take? 
if we walk in person. We run or we walk? Probably walk. Saskirin opens his mouth uh, like he, he's about to answer, and then you see him hesitate, close his mouth again, and think about it for, for a moment longer. And, and, and then uh, he, he nods and, and uh, uh, simply takes a step towards the door and, and, and says, uh, mm, two, two, two days. Okay. Can I inside check that? Yeah. I don't want you to can use the check professor mid midway through. <laughs> cool. Uh, 16? Mm hmm. The, the impression that you're getting is that uh, uh, it might be a little longer than that, and Saskarin is worried about uh, angering you. <laughs> you see how he, he looked to the side as he hesitated before answering. Ah, that will be fine. I'll follow him <laughs> towards the board. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Those of you uh, with a horse, you go, um, you get, you get, get them, and you're mm -hmm. ready uh, to head off. And Saskarin begins um, uh, closely followed and watched over by all of you. Begins to head east of the colony. Let me pack this up. Ooh. Oh, I hope it doesn't break it. Oh, does it break it? No, we're good. Okay. The first day of travel uh, is uneventful. Um, this, uh, you follow the road only for the first few hours uh, of the journey and then you begin to head uh, further north uh, compared to the road. Uh, you've been on, on this path once before, coming the, the opposite direction, but now you're heading into, into different territory and there comes a moment where you're losing sight of the lake to the west. Uh, during... Uh, the first break uh, uh, where you guys sit down and uh, uh, rest your legs for 10 minutes as as Pontifex takes uh, uh, a look at uh, the uh, at the book that he, he has been very vigilantly uh, uh, always having a hand on it at all times uh, as you guys walked uh, he, he, he checks with Orm who uh, confirms that you guys are heading exactly in the direction of uh, where uh, Jamiel lives, or rather where one of these doors can be found. Uh, and further into the day, every time uh, the Pontifex checks with Orm, uh, Orm are getting more and more excited about this, always confirming that you're right uh, on track to uh, go to where he lives. Is there anything during the night that you guys would like to do? Mm. What me? Uh, yeah, I think at some time during the evening, uh, Tekka would approach the Scarin and ask, Why did you run from me in our joint dream? Siskirin's face crunches up a little bit like he's struggling to remember. Um, then he, he, his eyes widen a little bit and he's, he says, um, uh, I am sorry. Uh, 
Did you believe I would hurt you? He nods. I, I will not. I do bad thing. I hurt people. I do not mean to hurt people. If you do not wish to hurt people, then always strive your best to be better. To reach for help, not to run away. <laughs> F friend says same thing. Next time, do not run. Persuasion check, Tekka. Okay. Not a very persuasive person, but I will give it a shot. Have you considered using the soul? <laughs> <laughs> now again, that's more intimidation, but... <laughs> Next time, don't run. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> so scary not, but... It it's clear that he is still uh, he's still tense with with you around uh, not you specifically any of you guys around whenever any of you address him for any reason whatsoever he immediately tenses up um, and uh, even while having this conversation as you encourage him uh, to, to to rely on others and to to be better you just see the way his his eyes are uh, shifting left and right as if a, he's ready to run away at any moment, but the whole day he, he hasn't. Yeah, I don't think Tekka would have anything more to say. We'll probably just start practicing with uh, the bow Got from the one who stares. Everyone else is good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell us I'll have a question for him, but that might wait till the next night. <laughs> Keep him awake. Um <laughs> Also, can we Can we try to move at like a quickened pace since it seems like it might take uh, a little more time than we were planning on? I mean we've got the slowest we've got horses for the slowest people, right? So we can go Maybe a little faster. That's usual. true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you can you can travel at a faster uh, pace. Saskarin is quick, right? Saskarin is very quick. Yeah. Faster than any of you. With any of us. The possible exception. Oh, actually, no. He matches. Uh, he matches. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> counting the horses, but he does. He does yeah. match uh, uh, Tekka's potential yeah, that's speed. What I thought. Yeah, we know that from from um, that in the, place. the, the chase. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. wondering if. Uh... Oh, I lost him. Where is he? There he is. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um. There was something I needed to do before the day. Oh, yes. Pip. Key attacks. You, mm. No, Pip, you pay your first 20 gold pieces to Casimir. <laughs> <laughs> he wants it as we go? What's he going to do with it now? It's birthday. Okay, at least it's not accruing interest. <laughs> uh, everybody Pip wouldn't count. know what it means. <laughs> everybody count down one set of rations. Mm -hmm. And we're ready to continue. Uh, the following days, you all uh, get organized to try to um, uh, make as best uh, use of your horses as possible, uh, letting the the slowest uh, 
slash all these people ride on them um, and occasionally rotating them around so that people get to, to, to rest uh, every, every once in a while. Um, you try to quicken your pace and uh, um, perhaps it is because you're so focused on just uh, um, heading as fast as you can uh, that by the time you hear the flapping of wings, it's uh, by the time you, you make the realization you hear it into sound, it's already really, really close. And they sound massive. And as you all turn around uh, in search of the, the source of the noise, you spot something not like a bird, not an aracocra, uh, but a set of wings that you see uh, flapping coming towards you. Uh, they are leathery, they are bat-like. Oh. Something as black as the night, like a shadow in the skies, uh, flying straight towards you, and when it lands, it lifts a cloud of dirt all around itself. Uh, a two-legged uh, dragon-like beast stares at your group with large glowing yellow eyes with vertical pupils and the wyvern lowers its neck and from it climbs down a human woman who dusts her pants uh, and hands a letter to Pontifex. <laughs> as the uh, oh, as the world point one. male woman um, says uh, uh, says to him that uh, uh, this one was oh crap the word is escaping me it's 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 a uh... Expedited. Yes. <laughs> Vibrant class shipping is like <laughs> it's a price range all of its own. I have World Point Prime. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> World Point Prime. Uh, now, as he is, the woman climbs back onto the wyvern and flies off. <coughs> uh, uh, with Matt not being here, I am not 100% sure. It's probably fine. And we Could can wait I until he's back. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, are you going to ask for permission? I'll make it an animal handling check if necessary. I mean, are you asking the woman if you can, or are you just going for it? Is the wyvern okay with being pets? <laughs> okay, <laughs> roll an animal handling check. Yes! That's what I built my character for. Not enough. Wow. Pet the dogs. Um, okay, so according to what I ruled, this wyvern is very unfriendly. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, this, this, this was, uh, um, uh, this, this, this particular individual has really bonded with uh, his handler. Uh, and doesn't really like any attention from anyone else except for you. Uh, you nice forward and uh, um you're 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 feeling confident uh, you're uh, i mean you've always been uh, reasonably good with with animals and uh does this count as an animal you're not quite sure probably but you figure that uh, uh it a lot of plants. probably likes to <laughs> probably <laughs> likes to be pet right and uh, it's it's a strange feeling the scales feel very rough uh, and uh, as you're sliding your hand down its neck uh, you feel the moment you go against the scales you almost cut yourself you feel very so thin and almost sharp uh, almost like get, getting a paper cut um, but you, you you get almost almost lost in this it's a, it's a strange almost exhilarating feeling you slide your hand down the wyvern's neck over and over uh, and you, you almost uh, don't even notice that a woman is, has been asking you if you're, if you're done that she needs to go uh, <laughs> and uh, 
once she climbs back uh, uh, on her on her steed, uh, the the wyvern pushes its head against your chest, lightly taps you, and with its strength, you're almost knocked to the ground, as gentle as this creature is being. And uh, as it flaps its wings down, the, the strength, uh, the, the, the gust of wind uh, uh, knocks your your head off your head. <gasps> I thought you said head off your head. <laughs> <laughs> your head. <laughs> Talix quickly recovers his hat. Do I need to make a check for that? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> they're uh, they're raised in Barumia, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, despite the VIP extra fast delivery service, the letter that Pontifex got is very short, and he, um, I'd imagine, is not particularly pleased with it. Uh, and we, we can move on and we can just discuss the contents of it at a later time when Matt is here. Alright. The whole journey well, that forward was weird. from that point, uh, you'll notice that Pip is still like a little wide-eyed, um, kind of looking back in wherever the direction the, the wyvern flew off to. Uh, and at a certain point along the journey, he would uh, whisper to Brooke, was was that a Barumian wyvern? Um, would I know if it is a Barumian wyvern? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pip is I, not from Plurina, uh, but you guys who are, this is, uh, uh, it's it's common knowledge that wyverns are almost exclusive to that territory. <clears throat> they can be bought and raised elsewhere, but they're mm -hmm. the ones who specialize in breeding them in the first place, and who use them even in their military. But, yeah, that's that's a Burman Wyvern. And you want to hear a fun story? Well, it's not that fun, but it's something I've heard that happened. Mm -hmm. Apparently, in a Burman colony, there was once a Wyvern that went berserk for no reason. That's a that sounds like a crazy rumor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sure does. <laughs> uh, Pip, at this point, he, he reaches in his backpack and pulls out um, a, a toy that maybe you had seen him purchase at the uh, Gnomish toy store that you were at recently. Um, and it's a poseable uh, wyvern figurine. And he sort of fiddles with it in his hands as he uh, says... My parents were from Barumia. Oh. <clears throat> Did they ever have a Ryvern? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Can you take a Wyvern to Ladaria? Uh, I assume so. A small one might be easier, but otherwise I think only if you were a soldier. I don't, I don't know much about my parents, but they would tell stories about these, these huge creatures that we would have back at home. And now I've seen one. Wow. Yeah. Next time, you should ask, if we see that lady again, you should ask her for her will point card. Maybe she'll let you see it more time. I'd like that. Apparently, all we need to do is get very important letters. Yeah. <laughs> or if you save up enough money, you could buy your own Viber. Oh. <laughs> Casimir, do I really have to pay you 20 gold per day? I'm saving up for a Wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could probably get your own Wyvern if you just joined the Boromian military. And then Where they would they? pay you. Are they here? Well, no. Though, Are they in Plurina? Maybe? Uh, what is... Uh, uh, Borobia has one colony on the, on the peninsula. What is it? Uh, Lita, right? Hmm. 
Maybe. The, I can't <laughs> see the map. You can't? <laughs> can't? It's where it is on the wall. I can't even press alt to look at it. Oh, no. oh the Plurnan one. No, the the, the Zaspert one. But it's on the table. Oh, okay. Well, I was looking at the one on the wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't realize this was out. When, uh, when Casimir mentions about Pip joining the army, Brook gives him a look. <laughs> and I was like, don't give that kid wrong ideas. There are probably other ways to get a Lyran. It's a good career. Wait a minute. For who? Anyone. Would P wouldn't would Pip not have seen one during his time living here? I don't think they had wyverns in Lita. Then where did the wyvern go berserk? I don't know where. I just heard that at that. <laughs> in a Beruvian colony? Yeah. There's only one. <laughs> Who knows? I was the wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> that means it happened after he left. Oh, by the way, speaking of crazy rumors, uh, you know. <laughs> Did anyone happen to hear anything interesting during our, during our night stay in Similon? Just making sure we checked for that. Uh, speaking of checking for that. Yeah. I did listen very okay. closely to any Similon. <laughs> <laughs> you guys listened My to ears so were closely. Peeled. Anything crazy at the fish market? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys have just gotten a rumor. Yeah, this counter is way low. So, no. But you're closer to getting the next one. Okay. Ooh. Um. Yeah, Pip would. He would just. Uh, um. Sort of frown at the mention of Litta and, uh. Just keep playing with his wyvern as they walk by. Um, further, sort of making it fly in the air as they continue traveling with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just the usual. Okay. Well, when the when the wyvern had arrived, it was this brief moment when uh, you guys realized that. Nobody was keeping an eye on Saskarin anymore. I'm not quite sure where he went, but it turns out he just hid behind a tree. And as soon as the wyvern is gone, he steps back out, looks around, looks up at the sky, and then resumes leading you. And at your uh, slightly quicker pace, it would be... Um... Right uh, at sunset. When you begin, huh? you would begin to hear noises ahead of you. Far away, not too loud at first. And there's more than, than the one set of sounds that you're hearing. First, it's something... Uh, um, a loud thunk happening pretty regularly. Boom. 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 And then other noises that the closer you get, the more there you you you've heard these so many times and your hair is standing up a little bit on the back of your neck as you're recognizing the whirring of mecha mechan of uh, metal mechanisms. Um just a little bit ahead of you, and you're now in this patch of uh, sparse trees. Uh, um, you, you can see through them pretty far still. It's not really a proper forest. Um, and, and you can see far ahead something glinting in the low uh, setting sun. Uh, m a metal shape, uh, massive. One of the biggest machines you've seen so far. Something shaped like, like a bear, like an owl bear, and it, in place of claws, this mechanical owl bear has a saw, 
and another one further away in place of its claws as straight up the head of an axe. And you see them working on cutting down a tree. Hmm. Saskarin is here, friend. Uh, position yourselves on this side of the map over here. Oh, this should be over here. Um, Saskarin making himself a little bit uh, even even smaller than he already looks. Uh, he says, "Who? Uh, who? Who?" Well, the. We see the machine, right? Oh, wait. Uh, uh, you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, see? I'll point Missing at him. Casimir. Okay, you, you're you know pointing at the... Ah, uh, uh, hi. Um... Oh, Orm, make them. Did you always have a mini? That's so cool. Not always, no. I love Here it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Pontifex. Pontifex and his horse. Ooh, who's volunteering to control Pontifex for this? Uh, I've got a sheet up. I was looking at it in case. We we needed to do combat, so I, would I can appreciate. Uh, yeah, I would I would really appreciate it if someone else ah uh, could handle that. The Saskarin should be a little shorter, right? Uh, Saskarin is about uh, uh, about five feet. About the same as Tekka. Uh, yeah, they're both. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, That's pretty yeah, that similar. Looks about right. Yeah, it is four shrink. foot nine. Okay, then. Just yeah. Roughly like that, yeah. You made him smaller still. Yeah, because he's hunched over. <laughs> He's still taller than Pip while being slouched, so I don't think he's too small. All right. Uh, I don't remember where we were at with the conversation. Saskarin, will they harm us if we approach? Maybe. Will they harm you? Saskarin tilts his head to the side. Mm, I... no. So if you're with us, will they still harm us? Maybe. Maybe we could... maybe we could sneak by instead of having to destroy them all. Everyone roll a perception check. Oh. We are like 60 Relax. feet away from one of them right now. Nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Pontifex. Yes, please. <sighs> Okay. You're listening to the sounds of the tree getting cut down. One of them is already on the ground and is getting uh, carried away. You hear this far away 
um, recur recurring noise, almost like a hammer hitting something solid. Uh, and, and, and Tekka is, is the one to, to notice these machines further away uh, from, from the, uh, the mechanical owlbears. Uh, these ones shaped like goats. Um, their massive curved horns currently in the process of hitting a boulder and breaking it down into smaller pieces while a mechanical crab comes over and you've seen these before um, and uses its, its pincers to pick up the stones, pick up the, the pieces of wood and carry them uh, and, and take you move a little bit to the side to be able to see this better and uh, the, the, the crab piles up these materials next to a wooden door. And as the crab stands in front of it, you see something else shining and from this distance it's, it's hard to tell but you squint a little bit and you see a mechanical bird, a mechanical raven on top of the door. Uh, flapping its its wings, not not in flight, but almost like in a, in a in a signal, and the, the door opens. And when a crab walks through, carrying some of the materials it gathered, it, it doesn't come out on the other side. It's it's gone. The door closes behind it, and uh, you don't see it anymore. As far as the, your group can tell, um, you can you. You had at least one person roll well enough that you can see the three uh, owl bears, the two goats, uh, and you know there is a bird uh, uh, over here. So he's collecting wood and stone and using it to repair his castle. Yeah, I don't. I just. There's all the open space in front of it. I don't really see a way where we can sneak past everything. Even if, like, we take a long way around? When we look at the castle that is being repaired, it's like the whole area around it, like, completely... Like, has, like, all the trees and rocks cut down. Ah. Uh. Like, open. Around the wooden door? Oh, is there only a door? There's just a door. Just a door oh. frame. Oh, then we can probably go around. The thing is, it seems like the bird is the one that controls when that door opens. Does the door look like we can, like, it has a knob or any way to open it normally? Um, Tekka's tiefling eyes do see a <laughs> handle. <laughs> it, 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 besides the fact that there isn't a building attached to it, it does look like a normal door. It has okay. a handle, it has a lock. Maybe we can open it, maybe we can't. So, Skarin, is this our way in that door? Yes. And then uh, we make our presence know. I, I, uh, I do, do not lie. It is, it is strange, but door takes you other place. We've heard of such a thing before. That bird will see our every approach. I see no other way than to walk straight ahead. Tuskarin. Um, he, he turns Just around. If you approach and ask that we are allowed to see Orm, will that be enough? Does he I, wish to meet us? I not know. Um, mm, we we agree. I take book to him. 
I take book to friend. I d do not say I take people to, to friend. Well, then let us go together. Hey, uh, would it make it easier if I flew on over there and maybe, like, uh, beat that bird up a little bit, cause a distraction? Let's see if nonviolence is an answer first. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, Aww. Let's not let ourselves get surrounded if things go wrong. <laughs> I take the lead. Shouldn't us Karen Lee? Oh. You go ahead. Us Karen should be with whoever's taking the lead. Us Karen with me. Us Karen promptly uh, steps next to you. And Perhaps uh, Pip and the oh. Professor waits behind where all of these machines are, and if something goes wrong, uh, save us. And Brooke and I can join Tekka. Okay. Uh, is Alex on the horse? I want to try to leave, uh, well, I don't know how long we're going to be there. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's ride that just... Dutch's gonna see some shit <laughs> on her time with us. Okay, so the three of you plus Dutch's are moving forward while the four of you are staying back, yeah? Mm. Okay, and you're make you're not making any effort to not be seen? And not Take be seen? not. No, yeah, we're, we're going as a group and uh, we're gonna try to talk our way in. Okay. Uh, you step... With Saskarin. Yeah, yeah, hold on. <laughs> you well, step forward. Like we're, we're not going to go ahead of Saskarin. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, you step forward. Um, splitting your group and stepping right between um, three of these giant bear-like machines. And, and the closer you get, the more you can see. Uh, this one's... The ones you have fought, particularly the, the latest ones, the, the giant uh, uh, snakes that you fought only a few days ago, those were built out of beautiful, polished, strong metal. Uh, but uh, these machines here are made of a, uh, a mix of metal and, and wood, at least the outer part. Uh, and, and you can... You can tell that the materials are generally uh, more shabby, uh, less new, uh, probably less strong. They even look less less clean overall. Um, and as you're stepping right in between, in between these three, not a single one of them turns to look at you. None of them stop what they're doing. Um, you, you may have been holding your breath for a moment, but then you just simply you continue. Even just a few feet away from them, uh, you make your way in between the, the owl bear and the goat, and you turn to your right just to see these machines hitting with their heads, with their horns, these boulders over and over, and just cracking it open uh, with with the, the strength of their bodies. And these these uh, mechanical goats as well, also uh, not being built entirely out of uh, uh, brand new metal, uh, but in implementing some uh, some wood in their design. Uh, do you want to step up to the door? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you do? Your friend is clever, Saskia. He, 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 he is very clever. So, do we open this door? Uh, um, I open? I open. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, Tekka, you're stepping up. Oh, Burke is not with us? I am. Just didn't move so many. What? Okay. <laughs> I oh. asked multiple times who was going and who was going. Who wasn't. We, well, we said it at the start. Yeah, I saw it since Jason yeah. said it at the start that I would be with him. Ah, okay, that's fine. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Take a walk up to, to this door. Uh, you see the, the mechanical raven uh, on top of the door frame. Um, its head looking down at you. And as you're reaching for the handle, before you can touch it, the door opens outward, away from you. Through it, you don't see what is directly on the other side of where you currently are. You see a large circular room. The floor and the uh, the floor is made out of uh, wooden planks. The walls are made of stone, and uh, uh, directly in front of you there is a there is a spiral staircase that uh, uh, hugs a central uh, stone pillar in the middle of this room. And uh, looking up, it looks like it's uh, there's other floors above you, uh, but the the. The, for as as otherwise barren that this enormous room appears to be, uh, it's filled with doors, just over a dozen. They're all up against the um, the wall of the circular room, and every single one of them looks different. Uh, the one you walked through is one of the most plain ones, but some are twice its size. Some are made of metal. Some have decor decorations on them. Some are just... They almost look like a, um, a prison doors, just made of uh, uh, metal bars. What would you like to Any do? Any labels? Hmm? Any labels? Uh, glancing in from where you're, you're at, uh, not that you can see. All right, well, well, let's wave back to our other group. Then it seems like it's going to be safe for us to go in, so... Oops. Talix will turn and back into whoever is looking. Pip. Um, it would probably be Pontifex looking, uh, because during this whole time, you guys walking up there, um, and Pip starting to walk over pip will have been uh fabricating his doll uh with saskaran tokens uh for fingernails and one clump of hair just in case <laughs> okay just in case what just in case saskaran decides to be evil <laughs> <laughs> wait you have four fingernails uh, well, I have more than that, actually, but I'm not using all of them. <laughs> Did you rip off all of his fingernails? No, he didn't rip them off. Just <clears throat> clip them. It's not guess, why he is so, guess why he's so traumatized from oh. being in jail. It was old Pip. Okay. So using using five tokens. Okay. And then they begin heading over. And with you guys too, uh, no matter how close you actually get to these machines, they are doing their job. And uh, none of them shows any interest in you. We are now here. We enter. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Tekka, you... You put your arm through the door frame and there isn't any anything that you feel except for a slight uh, change in temperature and you can't help but look uh, across from the other side of the, of the door frame uh, just to see how your own arm seemingly uh, disappears right through and then you step in. All of you walk inside? Mm -hmm. What do you do with the horses? I ride Duchess in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looks tall enough. Yeah, the, the, this is um, uh, 
as normal looking as it is, this is a pretty tall and pretty wide uh, door. The, uh, the, the materials that are being brought in uh, can comfortably fit through, and so can an adult, uh, normal-sized horse. Uh, so, okay. You bring... Uh, that means everybody is going inside. Uh, let me move all your minis aside for a moment. This looks like a map of like a railway system in a city. True. <laughs> or a gnomish etch -a sketch <laughs> I'm going to be taking this. Uh, pack. And here you are. You come in through this door that I placed you in front of. This one. Hmm. I do not enjoy this magic. Is this door common in Plurna? Hmm. I'm assuming I've never seen a door like that, right? No, no, you have not. Then Brooke shakes his head. Nope. At least not where I'm from. Good. Mm. True. Well, no sign of life. <laughs> Which way do we go, Siskarn? Up the the raven that was on top of the door frame uh, flies in with you, mm. and the, just as the door opened on its own, it also closes on its own. The raven lands a short distance away from you. Uh, oh, ooh, uh, I'm going to take another perception check from everyone. Ooh. Alright. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh. 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 Yep. Oh. Okay. Oh, is that Pontifex? Yep. The second, one? second one was Pontifex. Ooh. So that would be it would be Pontifex uh, uh, and, and Talix. Wait. I literally have the same perception as last time. Oh. Um, it was it was loud enough that as I just stepped in, you could hear um, uh, something was going on in this room. You heard a loud, almost clanking noise, uh, and and it came almost directly ahead of you. Um, and so the the, the three of you uh, move forward a little bit as you you're approaching the raven, but you're like looking uh, directly in this direction, and you can see the stairs uh, here keep going up. But it's also, uh, they also go downward. Uh, you are not on a... On a uh, there are more floors above and below you. Uh, but the, the loud sound you heard was of a, of a great closing. Um, and the, the way that leads down the stairs is currently blocked. Uh, it's this enormous metal grate that then has uh, some kind of black covering, maybe like a cloth, uh, directly beneath, and you, can, you can't actually see through it because of it. Mm. So now we can only go up? Uh, that's what it looks like, yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's where he wants us to go. Up. <sighs> if you look upwards, how far does it go? Uh, you can't tell. You just see that he, the stairs reach to a floor above, and then you can't see past it. Oh, well, let's go. Are these doors labeled or are they just Ooh, um, different kinds of doors? Yeah, now that you're inside, uh, um, taking a better look around, you don't you don't see any name, any kind of label, any writing anywhere. But you can see that um, each door has. Uh, um, oh, ooh, actually, no, you can't. 
<laughs> okay. Up it is. They have invisible labels. <laughs> Are the horses okay on the stairs? I might I might leave Duchess here. What if she goes through a random door? <laughs> I don't think she'll open it. I guess or might. That would suck pretty bad. Send her to the shadow realm through this door. The <laughs> shadow realm looking door. <laughs> The one that floats. Yeah. Gently sways sideways a little bit. Almost as if there is wind. Um, but there is no breeze in here whatsoever. There are no windows. And it's it's pretty quiet. Hey, Professor, do you want to consult the book real quick? <laughs> I'm curious to know if the book knows where some of these doors go. Oh, yes. I'll uh, bring it up. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> pretty good. It's almost like he's right here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, the Pontifex, carefully takes the book uh, out in front of him and uh, flips through the pages until he finds a blank one uh, where writing immediately springs uh, forward onto the page as the ink begins to, to form words and says, Wrong color. Hold on a second. Eh, can't read black on this map. Uh, ah. All right. Here we are. I'll, I'll go in this corner over here. Oh, wait, we... By the way, maybe do it in a way where the raven doesn't see the book. <laughs> just in case. Good point. <laughs> we all just... Did I, did I say book? Uh, <laughs> I was talking to my friend Brooke over here. Brooke, you know about this place. Pontifex is like in the back of the group looking away from the raven. Yeah, I have been through here many times. <laughs> and seen every door. Does this place only go to places in Ladaria, or does it go other places? <clears throat> Let me think for a second. <laughs> only Ladaria. Hmm. Interesting. Count 15 doors. Anyway. Oh, is there a new door? What's different? Hmm. That might have been helpful. Maybe he doesn't want us to see something. Okay. Yeah, so uh I'll leave I'll leave Duchess downstairs. Okay. And it's around this moment when the mechanical raven calls. All of your all of your heads snap uh d d immediately towards it. Um you tense up a little bit. And then the, the machine looks upward and opens its beak and a ray of light emerges from it. It's a pleasant light blue shade, very, very bright into this otherwise uh, fain uh, faintly uh, uh, dimly lit room. And this, this light, uh, it weaves itself into uh, a shape. 
the shape, a, a humanoid shape. And although its contours are uh, hard to, to actually see, um, uh, P Pontifex can kind of, uh, can, can recognize him. And you all have a guess as to who this is anyway. And this, this figure uh, made out of light. Uh, um, yeah, you can see its body and some something uh, very faint uh, uh, in the back, almost like you can see the um, some some of his surroundings. You can tell he's somewhere. There's a wall behind him and something that looks like a shelf, but it's it's all very very faint and very blurry. Uh, but the voice that comes out of the raven as this uh, uh, figure of light speaks is uh, uh, crystal clear, as he says. <laughs> Saskarin, you're you're alive. Saskarin steps towards it and then stops and turns to look at the rest of you. Takes another step. Saskarin, do you recognize this? Uh, friend. Then I walk with you. By all means, speak freely. Um, Don't stop on our account. Saskarin almost uh, skips uh, towards towards the Raven, um, as the, uh, the 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 vision of light of of the man standing before you um, looks at uh, Saskarin up and down. There is a smile on his face behind uh, his mustache and his beard, and then. His gaze moves to the rest of you, and his expression becomes a lot harder. And he says, uh, addressing the party, So, why are you here? I have a guess, but I'd like to hear it from you. We have many questions to to ask you, really. By any chance, do you recognize any of us? Roll an insight check. Ooh, insight check against a hologram. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh! Nice! Okay, well, oh, well, and I even rolled really well, but <laughs> uh, it's you're you're uh, you're not getting the details of this person's facial expressions, but uh, you you uh, you. Still, from from the sound of his voice, from from uh, uh, his body language, uh, when he said when he shakes his head and looks a little perplexed even at the question and, and says this is my first time ever seeing you he sounds genuine to you Talix you don't detect a hint of deception in his voice mm. and what a strange group that you are you are the ones in possession of the guide aren't you it's an interesting sort of guide. Uh, it's, well, sort of missing all of the writing. You know anything about that? Again, looking a little perplexed at the question, he shakes his head and he simply, uh, he simply says, I don't really know what you're talking about. But as for my questions, I only have one. Why haven't you handed it over yet? Well, I believe it belongs to one Jamiel Fleetfoot. And? Are you and who friends are you? with Jamiel? Do you care about what happens to his, to his belongings? We would like to be. <laughs> friends. Clearly, you don't know him well enough. What do you know of him? 
What do I know? More than anyone else. <clears throat> Should we just... Oh, I wish I wish Matt was here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need from Matt? I think he would just have a lot of questions. <laughs> Or should a lot we, to say. Should we just ask if he's Jamiel? <laughs> that's that's what we were getting at, right? Sure. Yeah, uh, that, I think that's the theory. Yeah, that was a theory that, that Pontifex brought up last session slash two days so ago. We could say Pontifex says something like, eh, let's stop beating around the proverbial bush. Uh, <laughs> are, are you one Jamiel Fleetfoot? <laughs> After a brief pause, the man starts laughing. It's it's a it's a pretty joyless laugh, uh, but but still one that seems to be not forced. <laughs> and um, uh, but by, by the time he's done, uh, he he dries his eyes and says, "And where in the world would you have gotten that idea?" The professor can explain. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't play Matt. Okay, character. okay. <laughs> so Look. we know that Jamiel tends to return from the dead now and then. And here you are in his home. And... Uh, here we are, apparently in possession of the spirit of a dog that happens to have your name, Orm. Strange yes. that he would give his dog the name of his once rival. What the hell are you... The spirit of... You are not making any sense. So how about I make things simple for you? You know what I want? Hmm. Are you going to hand it over? I'd like to see you in person if you don't mind. Yeah, and you also kind of attacked us like 10 times at least. So... That would not have been necessary if you what had just you let go of the, the book. book. What do you want with the book? My reasons are my own. Just, well, you're not making a very compelling case for us. As if you'd listen to me. Try. Oh, yeah, we'll listen to Saskarin. <laughs> Saskarin nods. Does that count as assistance? Oh, sorry, did you tell me to make a persuasion check? Uh, yes and no. Uh, to, to yes to Jason and no to Dennis. <laughs> um, I'll use my stolen inspiration. Okay, so that's now a fourteen. Common inspiration. Oh, that's what you meant with stolen. Fourteen? Yeah. I will tell you this. That book cannot be published as it is right now. I'm going to make You're sure. You're right about that. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that things... Wow, let me redo that sentence. Hold on. <laughs> uh, DM, brain. I got it. Okay. I'm going to make sure that everything is made right. So, like I said, I'm going to make things very simple for you guys. You can either hand over the book right now. 
or I'm going to take it. Do you, hmm. do you think do you think Pontifex would just like open the book and scroll through the pages showing that like most of them are empty or Ha huh. It's a good question. No. I can ask Matt. <laughs> <laughs> He's not He's... in Twitch chat. Just He's don't, in Discord don't worry about right what... now. Don't worry about what Pontifex would do. Like, if you want to do something with a book, you can do it yourself. <laughs> but I don't know if Pip would do that. Then Pip wouldn't. <laughs> <clears throat> the book is empty. There's literally nothing written in it. So even if we were to publish this book, nobody could read anything. The book is not empty. The book is finished. Well. How do you know that? It's none of your business how I know. Saskarin, didn't you say he's your friend? Yeah. Yeah. Since we're friends now, and he's your friend, can you help us a little bit? What, what, what do I do? Well, we're not gonna give the book over for no reason at all, and the reasons he has given us are not enough. What do I do? Convince him. He's your friend. Use your charm, like you did on us. <laughs> <sighs> um, we see Saskarian and the the image of uh, Vorm Tinhart make eye contact. Um, or uh, with a with an eyebrow raise says, "You made new friends. That's." Good for you, although I would criticize your choice of friends. Saskarin puts That's his... just uncalled for. <laughs> Saskarin puts his hands... <laughs> he puts his hands up, like, uh, together, rubbing them together in front of his chest, uh, visibly nervous as he looks back over his shoulder and says, Um... Mm, they... They... They are... They are... His voice trails off, and then kind of, kind of dropping that subject, uh, he speaks up a little bit and says, um, "They have book, but but not give book. Maybe um, you you talk, you you explain why you you need." Or holds up a hand, uh, holding him in the middle of the sentence. They wouldn't believe me. Well, do you have any proof for whatever your reasons are? If I did, then I wouldn't need you to believe me. Yeah, Look. fair point. I don't you need your understanding, I don't need your trust, I don't need anything from you, except the damn book. We this have whole thing would have been over months ago. Just hand yes. it over. So you should know that it won't be that simple. So, we have a mission of our own. And what we need is information. Right now, this book is our best chance at getting that information. Maybe if we could get some information from you, we might be more inclined to make a deal. What did you roll earlier? Was it a 14 with the die? Uh, with that other, yeah. Okay. You see him hesitating, and he looks at you, 
pausing and then just waiting for you to continue. Actually, I'll just straight up ask. What kind of information do you need? We need to go on a journey to enter Ladoria. And we also need to find certain people. First and foremost would be Jamiel, if he's still alive in some form. But outside of him, there are two Vidalcan hands, an elf who worked with him for some reason or another to get something very important over here to Ladaria. And we need to know where they are as well. Then we are at an impasse. I know nothing about any of the things you're talking about. Hmm. That one, he points at Pontifex, is the first Vidalcan I've met in person. And I don't know what Jamiel was up to. What else would you take from me in return for the book? Hmm. We, we can't give him more. Not yet. It's... I agree, I... I would feel bad about it as well, especially having no info or any explanation. <clears throat> I believe in fairness. I will either accept a fair trade or a fair fight. What does fair mean? If we can't reach a compromise, I can't let you leave with that book. Hmm. Like I've been saying, I will take it one way or another. Talix is going to turn to Brooke. Um, do you think there might be anything you might want to know while we have a chance? Anything you might want to ask him? He sings for a second. It's, it's <clears throat> nothing I don't already have answers to, or anything I think you should pretty even know about. I think this was a pretty bad decision, getting here. Hmm. This is going... I, I want to try, and this might be crazy, is there any chance that I can, like, go to one of the other doors and try to open it in yeah. a non-conspicuous way? Uh, which one are you going for? Probably just the next one over that's not uh, by him. Right, the, um, the one that's like a prison cell that's metal sure. bars. Okay, roll a stealth check. You are behind the group, so you would have, like, especially with the horses in the way, you would break line of sight, so let's just see how inconspicuous you are about it. 19. Nice. As far as you can tell, um, imagine uh, perhaps, like, you do this while one of the others is, has resumed talking, uh, Saskaren quietly uh, speaking with him, and with only Tekka really being able to, to, uh, to tell what they're 
what are talking about him. It's just telling him that he's doing fine. He, he has been eating food and he <laughs> he's well and he's sorry that he didn't bring the book back any earlier than this. Uh, uh, Talix, you made all your way to this to this door. Um, this this is a kind of cell that would be held closed with a lock. There's like a latch on it, but there is no lock on it, so the latch can simply be uh, pulled towards you. Yeah, I'll open it. Okay. I want to see if I can see through. Yeah. All right. You um you open the door and this, this, the the hinges are well oiled. It it opens very smoothly without a sound, uh, and you are greeted with the sight of the stone wall directly behind it. I'll try one more. As long as I can keep going. Um, you'd be able to get to this one also without like really attracting attention. But if you were to go beyond those, uh, uh, it would definitely be seen. Um, this door actually, actually, this door lacks a handle at all. Uh, yeah. But you, uh, you, you just try pushing it, or you try sticking your fingers in in the fissure between the two. Uh, and it, it, eventually, you sort of like just pull it open, and there is also nothing on the other side, just a wall. I'll try to join back up with the group, Mister mm -hmm. Tinhart. I think you're a rotten man. We came all this way to talk to you, and you won't even tell us why you need the book? Um, he... His expression softens just a little bit, looking at Pip, and then he... Uh, instead of talking to him, he addresses the rest of the group, and he says, And why exactly have you brought a child here? I'm not a child, I'm twelve. Uh, well, he actually gives Pip a bit of a of a of a nod, and he says, "Why have you brought a teenager here?" Well, we didn't think you would be unfriendly, or hurt a teenager, right? You're a good man, according a friend, according to Saskarin. So why wouldn't we bring a teenager here? If we just I came to talk. Allow him to wait outside, if you were to force my hand. <clears throat> hey, uh, Brooke, we don't have a way out of here on our own. Yeah. The doors open magically. I, I thought think so. We need to run through as soon as that door opens. All right. Let's try that. All right. Then that's a kid outside. No, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm staying with you. Well, technically, you already paid your part of it, right, Casimir? I hope 20 gold was worth it. <laughs> I actually only got paid for... Oh, okay, yep. So... What's it gonna be? I'm not leaving. I don't really think you have a choice on this. So what are you guys doing? Well, we can't really... Waiting for him to open the door so <laughs> Pip can go outside. Can, I'm not can, leaving. You can see that Rob has like a hand partially raised, almost like he's pointing at the door. And then he's like... Looking, if you want to kill us, you're you going to have to kill me. I'm not going to kill any of you. Yeah, see Pip, you said a fair fight.
And I start pushing him towards the door. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Pip is resisting. <laughs> uh, how do I handle this? Why are we fighting? Here, if you resist too hard, I would go down to him and try to whisper, if the door opens, we will try to run. What if he closes it on you? What if I can't get back in? What if... We'll get out together. You're all I've got left. It's okay. All right, everyone gather. Say goodbye to Pip at the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Deca approaching the door? Mm, no. God I damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dennis. <laughs> Just trying to get a plan going. Yeah. Time. Tekka mm. is uh, staring at the, this uh, figure of light. Uh, you know, yeah. Are you oh, going to install that first? You can, you can do that, yeah. No, just uh, w w while the rest of the, of the group is uh, like uh, uh, kind of sort of gathering around the door, you can hear Pip like just uh, uh, shouting at him in protest. Uh, uh, yeah, the three of you are, are together. You could see like Orm uh, um, glancing at you with like a little bit of curiosity on his face. You're like, you're so up close to him. You can kind of see basically what, what Pontifex had been able to, to see. Um, the the beard that reaches about halfway down his chest and then those two really long braids uh, on both sides. And, and from this up close, you can see that they, they both reach down to, uh, to his hips and are sort of like tucked into, into his belt. And you can see that he's basically using his, uh, his beard uh, to hang tools from it. You can see a slight glimmer uh, from, from scr uh, screwdrivers and other uh, little hammer. And even something that looks like a, a tiny hatchet. Uh, all just dangling from his beard. <laughs> you know Jemuel well. Is this his? I know him better than anyone else. And yes, I have temporarily moved in in his house. It's not like he's using it right now. Is Jamuel alive? You would know. Would you trade the book for that information? No. Are you sure? Perhaps I do know. Location. I can answer both of those questions. You offer the information for trade. It must be true. I do not lie. A fair trade. That's what I promise. Will you let me walk up these stairs? I will let you go anywhere you please in this tower. For the book. Include us in your goal. Our group joined together to help each other. Why not do the same now? Make your demands. You want to know where he is. You want to know whether he's alive. You want to be able to go anywhere in this tower. What else? I can guarantee that once the book is in my hands, I will never bother you again. And machines will leave you alone. We will be part of your project. You will tell us what you know. Project? What? Know about what? You are smart. You cannot play dumb.
fine. What else? Yeah, Tekka looks back to the group for probably the first time in a few minutes. Should we talk to the book? Yeah, what does the book have to say? Yeah. Give us one more moment. Let us consult Brook. <laughs> Without an R. The Brook. Hmm. That is a good <clears throat> What exactly will you do to the book once you have it? To the book. I to with the book. <laughs> Both. What do you do with a book? Read it. <laughs> yeah. There is more to it. I will edit it. And then I will publish it. Hmm. The book isn't just a book. Are you aware of that? Ormer shakes his, what or Orm shakes his head in a like um like he doesn't particularly care um and he he says you keep saying strange things about a book i don't care what kind of tricks you're trying to pull i don't care what kind of magic jamulus put on this book as long as as long as i can read it and change it and copy it well, and whatever spells are upon it, whatever code he has written his findings in, I'll, I'll dispel them. I will crack it. I'll figure it out. Whatever you have done to this book, it won't stop me. Okay. Talix will. Open the book to a blank page and show it to him. Uh, yeah, you see him look Say. at the page. He's, he's actually like leaning forward a little bit until he's, he, his image is um, like a little too far from the raven and he's squinting and he, he has to step uh, back closer to the machine. It's hidden. Say something. Oh. All right. Um, yeah. OK, Talix, you, you can't see this as you're holding up the book, but everyone who's in front of it um, sees, for a moment, nothing. And then the ink forming a simple word. No punctuation. Uh, you guys know that Orm, the book, uh, doesn't think too highly of Orm Tinhart. Uh, and you can imagine that uh, uh, he must be feeling either fear or disdain or uh, certainly not too happy to be directly in front of at least a man manifestation of the man. And you do see the dwarf uh, widen his eyes in surprise. There's something alive in this book. A soul seems to have been trapped within. 
this is something that we have to contend with. Yeah. And uh, you know for a fact, it's the soul. It's not just the the, the book it can write itself. It seems to be so, yes. Before we turn this over for you to uh, do with what you will, this is something that we must fix. Um, Talix, you have, you have shown yourself to be able to, to read this man quite well, um, but the, the confusion on his face, it's plain for everyone to see. His expression softening a, a little. He shakes his head in disbelief and says, I don't know what... I, I can't imagine what the hell Jamil is even trying to do here. You're concerned? about the well-being of this soul? It's not just a soul. <laughs> it's Orm, the world's most loyal Unin. And I won't let you hurt him. Orm. Wait, a Unin? Jamil has one. That would be the one. <laughs> ah, he named his dog Orm. So it would seem. <laughs> that has to be the nicest thing he has ever done for me. In his own twisted way. If you're concerned with the well-being of Orm, I don't plan to harm the book. In fact, tell you what, I can promise you this much. Once I am done copying and revising this book, I will hand it right over. You can keep it. Inside? Absolutely. What does Horm think about that? Are you asking for the Unin's opinion? I'm going to turn the book around and whisper. Horm sight check. Brooke, this whole time you haven't detected a hint of deception in this man's voice. He... Well, 12. Nah. He's not your friend. It, that much is obvious. What? <laughs> <laughs> he, his attitude towards you is not the friendliest, but uh, lying, trying to trick you, you're, that's, you're, not picking the, you're not picking that up. Um, Orm, the book, begins to reply. No, 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 oh. no, no, I don't like this. <laughs> it feels wrong. I don't like this. Mr. Tenhart, 
I know this is not the answer you wanted, but I know that in time we will uncover the text, the original text of this book. The soul of Orm here has made that much clear. He recalls as we travel, as we as we retrace the steps that he took originally with Jamiel across Lodaria. As we undergo our own mission, we will uncover the truth of this book. We have no intention of publishing it ourselves. No one else will know what is written here. We will not take any chance you want to have of setting right the, your own story before it's shared with anyone. But for now, I think we need to leave here with this book. Once, once we help our friend here, once we finish our own mission, then we can return the text to you. Completed for you to read and publish as you see fit. But we can't leave it with you right now. Can you roll a persuasion check, Talix? Come on, buddy. Please. Come on, Take it. Buddy. Take it. 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 <laughs> One to twenty. <laughs> the most powerful inspiration of all time. <laughs> Can we frame that one? <laughs> yes. That one goes up on the wall. <laughs> that one goes up on the wall. The laser mouth inspiration. I uh, it's saves saves the campaign. It's wonderful. I have just lost it. I think I accidentally put it in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I, well, there he goes. <laughs> oh no. Well, it did a job. Where is no? Where is it? Oh, I found it. Yes, it ended up in a bag. Okay, fine. Uh, this is this is a special one. Uh, I'll put it over here, and later we can frame it on the wall. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, you see, Orm Tinart just. Uh, Lower his head and shake it a little bit, just in defeat. And he—he uh, seems to be resolving himself to, um, like you—you you see him glance at something you can't see away from uh, from where the, um, the uh, the image, uh, the the uh, the illusion <laughs> that the raven is conjuring uh, can reach. Uh, he glances at Saskarin, who has been progressively getting closer and closer to him until he's almost like almost right beside him. Uh, he looks at Tech, looks at looks at Pip, uh, crosses his arms, makes eye contact with Talix, and says, "You're not lying about the book being incomplete, are you?" We have been steadily getting more of the original scripts. In fact, uh, if it would help you, I can transcribe what we have so far and leave that with you for now. But it's very little. After a brief pause, Sjorm shakes his head again as he says, If you're being truthful, the book is useless to me this way. 
Then promise me this much. You'll bring it back? Once it's complete? Yes. We but just need to be patient. I will be. And in return... I suppose I can let you see Jamuel. Oh. The vision oh. of Orm Tinhart dissipates. The mechanical raven closing its beak. You're left in silence for a few seconds until the large grate at the base of the stairs begins to lift. And we're going to take a short break here. Oh, great. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> great. Yeah. Good one. But also, once we go down there, it's totally going to shut. And it's going to be like, yep, I, I you're in here with him now, about... bitches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we are. As the great lifts up and you begin to, to gather around it, you hear um, what... Uh, it's the sound of footsteps, but each, every other step, uh, um, you, you can hear the difference in the, in the feet that actually hit uh, uh, the steps of the, of the staircase. Uh, until eventually a red uh, uh, head of hair uh, pops up from the floor below. Very cautiously looks up at the floor you're on. And he holds up his hands and says... I trust you not to stab me in the back, and I won't stab you in yours. Fair enough. What is up with the mini game? What's wrong with Looks the mini? Good. Looks good. Huh? We're just looking yeah, at. Yeah, it the, does look really good. The yeah. really cool minis that you've <laughs> compiled has, for it this. It has the 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 beard, the braids. The reach down on his sides. I couldn't actually hang objects from it, but just imagine it. I work with I'm someone who looks like this. Oh! <laughs> Including the metal limbs? No, I work with another person with metal limbs. Hmm. But if they, like, squish together... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> into a very compact form. <laughs> very efficient form. Okay. Orm Tenhart leads you downstairs. Special music. <laughs> the Raven lands on his, I was gonna say shoulder, but uh, had it is, I suppose. Um, <laughs> As the dwarf begins to lead you down the stairs, and, and you find, uh, you actually pass a few floors where he doesn't stop. Uh, and as, he, as he's leading you down, uh, he, he says, well, uh, you know my name, but I'd like to hear all of yours. Teka. Talix Moir. It's Brook, Brook Hayatep. Casimir. And the Pontifex introduces I'm himself. I'm Pontifex! Ah, ah, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he would say like That's his full like. name. <laughs> he would introduce a horse, possibly, also. Uh, so Skarin is sticking very close to Orm, just walking side by side by, uh, with him as, um, as you're heading down. And you pass uh, what seems... Uh, let, let's call it uh, something like a warehouse that is that is full of uh, uh, both complete and partially built uh, uh, machines. Uh, uh, that, that would be two floors down. I skipped the one. The one directly uh, below where you guys have entered the room uh, has the materials that you guys have been seeing. So just straight up uh, wood and stone and uh, there's uh, some metal. Um, that that's piled up in a corner. Uh, n nothing much else to see there. Um, the floor below that is where he seems to be keeping uh, most of his machines, <laughs> wood and gold. Um, and then uh, 
past that uh, is a room that is divided uh, in in half. You can only see one half, and then there is a door that uh, see, that leads to the to the other. Uh, everything so far has been exactly circular and the same size throughout. Um, and where where Orm stops feels more like um, uh, a a leisure area uh there there's couches and uh, some some benches uh, some some tables with uh, uh, uh schematics and small things that are being built uh but uh, also mainly as he uh, approaches a a a keg he gestures to it and he says ale any of you sure i'll try some uh, yeah, he actually just... has to to scramble around uh, to find uh, enough glasses for everyone. At first, he doesn't, and he send he sends a raven away. And as he's filling up uh, uh, glasses for 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 uh, the ones that he does have, uh, eventually the raven returns with a few more uh, until everyone uh, has one. He hesitates for a moment with Pip. I'm twelve. And then he hands oh, it over. Oh God! Can I <laughs> snatch it? Uh, you can. Do you have something that doesn't have alcohol in it for him? I have water. Sure, two waters then. <laughs> Will Pip allow this? He grumbles. <laughs> <laughs> I have made a friend today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, Orm gets also two glasses of water. Alex will just gesture at the uh, robots. So, why the deities? Eh, why not? For inspiration. Hmm. It started by just... Uh, you know, I, I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I, I make a machine. Uh, animals are pretty good at what they do, and that's what I started building originally. And I just adopted a theme, I guess. I've yet to see a fox. <laughs> or a wyvern, for that matter. I haven't gotten around to building any foxes yet. I couldn't really think of something to make them do. Um, but you have a uh, past, uh, as he... Um, a the... the you would have seen them in both floors that you have passed before this. There are some uh, some fairy dragon machines uh, that buzz oh. around and they have these little uh, brooms and uh, dusters. And it seems that they are in charge of uh, keeping the place clean. You even saw them like moving uh, some things around, cleaning up after the glasses once you guys are done drinking. Do you have a wyvern? You see him grin. Hmm. Oh, do I. It's my greatest invention so far. You have a possum? Ah, yeah, actually, we, we passed them. And you didn't see any opossums? Uh, no. Don't think so. Oh, sorry, that was me, the DM telling you, you didn't see any. Oh. Um, I don't believe so. <laughs> yeah. Wait, um, was that still a question? It sounded like a question. <laughs> <laughs> I am telling you that you haven't okay. seen any opossums on the way down, despite the Orm claiming that you have passed some. Um, and, like, he uh, is, you know, as, as soon as he notices the confusion, he, like, uh, chuckles to himself and he points at like a pile of metal that's on the ground. Uh, it just looks like scrap metal, uh, but as, as he as he comes over and gives it uh, uh, a light tap with uh, his uh, uh, metal foot, uh, you see the, um, the, the these 
plates of metal just scrambling and, and, and assembling back together into the, the small form of an opossum, uh, as uh, Orm chuckles and says, they're playing dead. I just want to point out, out of character, that I think it's just confirmed that the fox is the only one out of the canonical deities that he hasn't built, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Tenhart? Yeah? Do you have Jamul in prison? <sighs> well, I guess I should stop wasting your time and just take it to him. And before you say anything, before you pass any judgment, let me reassure you that he absolutely deserves it. Though you're free to believe me or not. What did he do to you? Um, Orm opens the door that leads to the other half of this room. Uh, and that, that half is completely dark. Uh, but he slaps his hands together and he makes a strange sound uh, when, when his real hand hits the one uh, that's not made of actual flesh and skin. And uh, the lights um, uh, tur turn on in this area. You can see these, uh, these scones on the walls where uh, unlit torches suddenly uh, flare uh, with, with fire. And you're welcomed by a really bizarre sight. You see on each side of the room, to your left and to your right, two rows of uh, large containers that are um, uh, partially at, at, an, at an angle compared to the floor. And uh, each of them looks this pale blue color, like they, they contain some, some uh, colored liquid inside that you can see bubbling. And he points at the nearest one and says, there's your friend. Pale blue liquid? Yeah. What? I don't think I understand. Take a closer look. Can I get closer and take a closer look? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can just walk into the room. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, you just step up to this strange contraption that is filled with liquid. Um, and, and you all, you pretty much press up your nose against the glass, and in this bubbling liquid, you see a face. You stare for a few seconds and uh, gently swaying uh, in, in this liquid, uh, a, the uh, small body of a halfling uh, seems to be kept inside. And then you turn at the other uh, strange contraptions in this room. There is a total of 10 of them. You look at the one next to the one that Orm pointed at and inside you see a hand and then you, you, you keep looking and you can see the rest of the body attached to this hand another halfling form inside just floating around seemingly dead or sleeping it could be either it's hard to tell do they look the same? they look identical Are you saying that this is how Jamil comes back? <sighs> really powerful wizards do some really insane things. But what about his soul? Is, is it... Now, the details, I don't get them. I don't get magic at all. But I do understand the premise. He makes bodies. And those bodies are bound to him. 
so that whenever something happens to his actual body and his soul is freed, it will come to one of these, and he'll pop out and be made anew. And the only difference this time is that I have interrupted the process. He once again points at the first, uh, uh, I'm gonna call them pods, uh, at the first one that he uh, initially gestured at. And he says, that's him. What did he do? He said you trapped him? I think in our earlier conversation I missed the problem, like the reason you're having Roller not liking him. I have indeed not tell not told you. But oh my whole plan is no longer viable either way, so why not? Um he actually like sits down on a little chair and he puts his feet up to uh, to a table and he sighs and he says all right ask me anything hi where do we start <laughs> does the, oh, can does we just the... start by saying why <laughs> oh why? sure because... what Talos is going to move closer to the one that supposedly has Shamiel's soul. Is it does it look conscious? No. What well, does the it look eyes in any way closed. different from the others? No, it does not. Hmm. Oh, actually, roll an investigation check. Oh. But <laughs> hey, what I'm proficient I... in that skill. You are? Nice. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, twenty total. Um, yeah. You you you'll, you will keep looking at this for the next few minutes as the conversation continues. As uh, you can see, the body just slowly uh, turning around, uh, p uh, floating into this liquid, <clears throat> and you're comparing what you're seeing with the one with the neighboring ones. Um, you see no visual difference in in the bodies contained inside. Uh, the only difference that you do pick up on is a little light. Uh, uh, there's a little gemstone at the base of the one you're looking at. Uh, it's green and it's it's emitting a faint amount of light, while the same gemstone on all the other ones, uh, it's the same color, but it doesn't seem to be making any light. Hmm. So. What did Jamil do? Like, what is the reason for all of this? <sighs> Stabbed me in the back. Not literally, though. Not literally, but <laughs> he might as well have. What is the one thing that Jamil is most well known for? Well, <laughs> it's obvious. Yeah, discovering Lidaria, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. He didn't discover Lidaria. I did. But you're not a goblin either. I. What? <laughs> oh, nothing. Just a silly rumor. <laughs> <laughs> so he took he took credit for what you did it's worse than that I don't need credit I don't need uh, to to be praised to, to have my name known but oh gods I found Lidaria. I had the idea. I built the ship. I found the path to it. I was the first person, the first Plurinon, to put my feet on Lidarian soil. And I made the journey back. And I told one person and one person only. My best friend at the time. And Jamuel and I, we, 
We made plans. We were going to build a bigger ship. We are going to take a crew. Witnesses. Make the journey again, but this time stay there and learn things about the continent and bring back all of our discoveries and then let everyone know. We had a date set for when we'd leave the continent. And when I showed up, he had left the day before. You know the rest. How we landed on Lidaria, made first contact with the locals, mentally came back to tell the tale. But you've never heard my name, have you? <laughs> and again, it's not about the fame. I don't care about the fame, but it's what he did. Can never apologized. He never talked to me. Never. He avoided me every time I tried to approach him. He would find every way to avoid me. Even getting a dog. <laughs> well, that's... What? It's fine if you don't believe me. I don't expect you to just accept what I'm saying. That's my reason. <clears throat> Can and I that's... get a certain feel though if he's saying the truth or coming? You want to roll an inside check? Yeah. You can give it a try. Oh god. <clears throat> Anyone who wants to can give it a try. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I believe you. He yeah. changes the, the position of his feet, uh, uh, uncrossing and crossing him back the other way. Um, and sighs and says, that's all I wanted to add to the book, really. Just at the end of the, of the foreword, one sentence. I couldn't have done this without the help of my best friend. I don't even need my name on it. Just some acknowledgement that we had something. Since I... you have him, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I think you deserve more than that, if that's true. I mean, we have heard a lot of bad things about Jamil. Normally, Not surprised? It's... The guy's an asshole. Yeah, normally it's more along those lines. <laughs> there are... In fact, there are very few things I know about him specifically, but... There have been a great many surprises. This just being one more. It's Some people. amazing and disturbing. Those who can bend reality to their whims. There comes a moment where they stop seeing other people as fellow humanoids. They're used to getting what they want. That's how he sees the world, I guess. I was a fool for not noticing it earlier. Now that you have him here, can't you make it like somehow that you can talk to him without him being able to escape? Like you said, he always dodged, right? He never wanted to talk. Isn't now the chance all the time? Uh, I'd have to wake him up. And once I do that, there's... Well, I'd have to imprison him properly, and that's... I don't know, I'd rather not do that. In the state he's in right now, it's like he's sleeping. He won't even notice that any time has passed. It's painless, to my knowledge. And what would I even talk to him about? He has made it perfectly clear to me that he's, he doesn't want anything to do with me. That's why I had to come up with a plan, get him stuck in here, take the book, add one line, and publish it. And then I'd let him wake up by the time he couldn't change the book anymore. So what went wrong? I don't know. What went wrong? He turns to look at Saskarian who like uh, jumps a little bit at this. 
and, and, and he, he starts uh, uh, just rubbing his, his hands nervously and he says, I, 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 I am sorry. You're fine. Whatever happened, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm glad that you're okay. Tell me what happened. Mrs. Karen is going to summarize what you already know about uh, uh, luring Jamuel to the slumbering cave, uh, um, finding uh, a a good moment to to kill him, and uh, uh, immediately after he did, Mrs. Karen says that he felt guilty and he felt bad and he lost a lot of time until he could no longer leave the cave. And you guys know that the tides uh, in the slumbering cave, there's like this two or three day uh, window where you can actually access it and then it floods again. And you, you do know that he's been supposedly trapped in there the entire time in between the previous low tide and the one when you guys actually arrived. Mm. So, were you already, were you already in here when Jamuel died? Is that how you stopped him from entering a new body? Yeah, that was a plan. I broke in his tower while he was gone, and then I. Well, we don't need to get technical, but I messed with things. I don't get magic, but I get machines, and this is, well, an halfway point. Hmm. Magic, just like my inventions, needs a power source. That's all I had to do, really. Just remove it. What's the power source? Um. Orm takes his feet off the table and. Uh, uh, stands up and is going to just go around this, this pod where uh, the, the body of Jamuel Fleetfoot is sleeping and just point in the back where there is this large uh, r roundish section missing and he'll say plenty of magic requires uh, gemstones the most powerful ones will require the bigger ones the ones with the most expensive cut I just took that off Hmm. Once we put it back, that's when the great and famous Jamuel Fleetfoot will wake up again. Alright. So... This is still all you want? Putting the acknowledgement in the book, once it's written. That is all, yes. <clears throat> Orm goes back uh, to, to the chair. Well... If what you're saying is the truth, that's fine by me. So the deal stands. <laughs> that's all I wanted to hear you say, but it sounds like we can't even do that. Not until the book is done. <laughs> what the then hell I did suppose... Jamil do to it? Why is it he, he looks like he's trying to, to, to find the right word, and then he settles on... Why is it broken? Originally, the theory was that... This was meant to be... Jamil's own phylactery, a way for him to come back. And that Orm, the dog... His soul was trapped in here by mistake. But it seems that can't be the case. How did 
his unin end up in the book? It's hard to imagine that that would happen by accident. He did really love the dog. Maybe he did it on purpose because because he didn't want his dog to die forever. <laughs> Jamuel liking form. Bizarre. I can't imagine he could ever love a dog he named after me. Orm said he treated him good, right? Oh. Uh, you check the book who confirms it. Um, this time, uh, this time, uh, the Tin Heart uh, looking with like more and more genuine amazement as uh, the, the book is answering your prompts. He seems to be the only one who has a kind word to say about Chamuel. Well, of anyone who knows him. So he do couldn't have been all bad. Do, do you think that... Nah, I can't be. <sighs> well, either what? way... I just... I keep keep thinking about why the name is Dog Orm. I don't think that man is capable of feeling sorry, but... Maybe. I think it's a conversation you two should have the chance to have together. I suppose. Although, he hasn't been talking to me all these years. I don't imagine he will start now after I've, well, I've done this to him. Well... Why don't you find out a way how to wake him up without him... I don't know. Being able to properly escape without him, without hurting him? And then you can force a conversation. <laughs> Trapping a wizard is not so easy, but... Uh, on the upstairs floor, the, the one with all the doors, there's an area of uh, anti-magic right in the middle. You can move the pod all the way up to it, and then open it up. And manacle him, I suppose. That would be safe. Well, okay, before we get into doing anything irreversible like resurrecting Jamiel as a prisoner, um. Is this seriously something you want to do right now? Well, I didn't think you... You could... Or he would be able to do it right now. Thought he would need some time. So he could have figured it out while... We go away. I'd just like to learn a bit more about Jamiel, maybe. He... He had plans beyond the discovery of Lidoria, and I don't fully understand the implications of them yet. One more thing that we'll have to discover on our journey. I've mentioned that he has refused to talk to me ever since the discovery of Lidaria. So I have absolutely no idea what he might have been up to. Do you know of any way that he might be in contact with the deities? With the deities? With whatever do you mean? Perhaps either the fox or the wyvern themselves. You seem like you might have a special fondness for the wyvern. I thought maybe you might have something to do with it. <laughs> I am no cleric, if that's what you're asking me. To my knowledge, neither is Jamuel, but well, a lot can change in 50 years. 
And maybe it was Schoolboy Cock. Someone else I need to speak to. Ah. <sighs> Mr. Tinhart. Pip? What is it? Do you, do you know where all these doors go? Ah, uh, no. One of the first things I did when I got in here was to also cut the power to them. I didn't know if Jamil had any allies, and I didn't want anyone showing up while I was here. Do you need to go somewhere? I think we gotta go a lot of places. It and would going certainly... a lot of places would help you fill in the book, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. huh. So that's the help you wanted. I could bring the power back. Uh, in all candor, uh, Jamiel did indeed have at least a few allies. Some of the people we're trying to meet. I'm not sure exactly what they're capable of either. So, uh, maybe just be careful with, uh, which doors you leave open. Can you only power one door at a time? Orm stays silent for a few seconds after what Talik said, and, and then he um, brings his attention back to the group and, and nods. Yeah. Oh, any of them. <sighs> Somebody will come looking for him. Won't they? That, that's what you're implying? I'm not sure... if they know even as much as we know. But if they did, then certainly yes. If they know to find that they should find him here, then they would be coming here. Then... that becomes an issue. Well, if I am to edit and publish the book before Jamil can stop me, then we need to keep him sleeping until then. And uh, filling in the guide from scratch, that could... It, it took Jamil 30 years to write it. It could take 30 more. I'll live that long, but... <sighs> Somebody will show up for sure. For now... We need to return to Simlilun. Just keep one of your lookouts at that door, and we'll return. And if we are to go to another door in the future, you can send one of your birds through with us. Will you return? Certainly. We've made a deal. <laughs> oh, you guys are way nicer than Jamio. It's nice, you know, actually to be talking to people I've been holed up in here for months. You're good company. <laughs> Would you like to play a game of dragon chess? <laughs> Don't confuse the professor. We still haven't finished our match. Please. <laughs> oh, I would love also, to. Also, Casimir in the meanwhile has been absolutely raiding the, the ale um, that's, that's, <laughs> that's talked in here. Oh no. Hey, what do I pay you for? He lifts his mug. Casimir, bring him the a cup. <laughs> Pip, now's the time to figure out a new price. <laughs> I pay him more. Oh God! <laughs> a better price for you. He's drunk. You take advantage of. I will smuggle you beer if you pay me more. I will 
give you ten gold pieces a day if you give me beer. But that's less. What? Well, yeah, you don't have to fight this guy. Well, I could totally take him. Look at him, he's missing two limbs. I would, this would be really easy. That's not very nice. Hey, but I'm a mercenary. <laughs> I'm... You asked me what you pay me for? That's for... F ah. he, start, he goes back to drinking. <laughs> I think he <you're> just laughs. <laughs> By the way, how did you keep finding us? What do you mean? Oh. Well, no matter where we went, those creatures found us. Right, right. You, you mean the book. Yeah, is it the world point card? Uh, what? N no. Okay. That would be a felony. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. We know uh. Orm Tenhart would never commit a felony. <laughs> yeah. Just murder. <laughs> that would be. That would be upstairs. Uh, it is a bedroom. Jamil asked this. Ah, oh, one of those wizardry uh, orbs. It, you can use it to find oh, yes. his belongings. Again, I don't get magic, but I, I think it's pretty easy to use. Only his belongings? Track anything aside from the book? To be fair, I've never tried to find anything else, but I believe so. Hmm. Right. Give us some good information. Yeah. I know the professor isn't here, but Pontifex, in your dream, <laughs> did, do you remember anything? Like, did Jamiel give your parents anything? Feel free to answer that when you're actually here. Yeah, let's <laughs> uh, I just can... take your time and think about that, professor. We'll talk <laughs> about that. I know it's a lot to process. <laughs> 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 he's like he's deep into this the dragon chess game that he has started with Orm. Orm, you have answered our questions. While you cannot trust Jamiel, you could ask your questions to his companion. And you can read uh, what what there is of the guide so far. Does he not hate me? Oh, he does. <laughs> I do Here. remember him barking at me. As loudly as he could. Wait, when? We can, uh, we can read it together. Oh, yeah. Uh, a few instances. I've tried approaching Jamiel many times. In many colonies, during many events. Is that a dog for... I don't know, a few years now? I saw him a couple of times. One of those Dildarian ones with a wool. Mm. Do you trust me to um, ask the book a few questions? Well, I'll be here with you, but yeah. Right, I don't have to... Uh, I, I won't touch it. Does, does it hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Orm, a little awkwardly, uh, Orm to Orm, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Tenart is going to say, well, this is not a question, but, uh, well, if I have the option of speaking to you and you can't understand me, I just wanted you to know that I, I don't mean you any harm, and I don't mean to harm Jamiel either, I just... I just wanted to right a wrong. After a few seconds, uh, uh, startling Tin Heart as this happens, the ink uh, begins to, to form a very simple, very short reply. You know, this is quite something uh, just uh and he, he's addressing you guys uh, the the book uh, the soul being in here i'd yeah. 
I mean, until today, I thought this was the most remarkable thing, but uh, no. Seems like this is just one of an array of reality challenging things that Jamuel is capable of. Ugh, wizards. He Orm just shakes his head. We're all speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so much to take in. A few oh, more words up here on the book. Yeah. Tenart just awkwardly says, ah, uh, thank you. And I'm sorry I trapped your owner. Ah, it's, that's a lie. I'm not sorry at all. But I am sorry <laughs> that it uh, um, may hurt you. Or, on your travels with Jamil, did he speak of a friend he betrayed? Tainart bursts into laughter at the last word. Doubtful. What? Though to my he... knowledge, I am the only friend he has ever had. <laughs> I... Mm. I don't get it. Why... Why would he name the dog he loved after you? And still talk... Talk about you... Like you were a friend. Perhaps because he's a coward? Who couldn't confront the shitty thing he had done to me? That would be in Carter for him. We have spoken with Orm for many days. Never been given a reason to distrust the words written. You should trust these words more than that of Jem. Tenhart, you know him better than us, but I can say that it seems his plans here are something he had plans for something great and world changing, something that's has uh, led to some bad attention from the Jade Council. Have you... Well... It's possible that he 
Prevents to distance you from this to protect you? Ormtinart chuckles to himself again and once more he says, doubtful. But then he seems to like consider it for, for a moment. And then he shakes his head again and says, doubtful. But uh, who the hell knows what's going on through his head? He, he, he made an enemy out of the Jade Council? <laughs> what the hell? I mean, well, nobody likes him, but what kind of problem could he ever have with the with the alliance? I don't even want to try to figure it out. He, uh, he's like this strange blend of he's a genius, but he's also such a moron. Hmm. The bastard always thought he knew everything that was going on, and nobody else could grasp it. He always saw everyone else beneath him, and he often got away with whatever he was up to. It He didn't get proven wrong enough times in life. So he just thinks he's smarter than everyone else. He has all the solutions to all the problems of the world. And shit, he, he does. He very often does. He's never been good with people, but... He's good with magic. And he's a good explorer. Even if he has... Well, some dirty tricks. And he, like, slaps... The, uh, the pod that contains uh, Jamil's body. There is no reaction from inside. <laughs> of course he's the greatest explorer to have ever lived. He can't die. Even if he really deserves it. Hmm. Hey, hey, Tin Heart. What is it? When, when we were in the jungle, there was, there was a, a, a really big mechanical, um, cat, cat, man, horse. You didn't build that, did you? Cat, man, horse. No. No? Never built anything of the sort? You, uh... Actually, you might want to visit that jungle sometime. There's a temple there with some rather interesting historical art. Oh, I would love to uh, see more of Lidaria, but I've... <laughs> it's not a good idea. My, my appearance, it... Uh, I spook the humanoids of Lidaria. <laughs> it's possible that you look like something that they learned to be afraid of a long time ago. I... My machines have never harmed them. But Lidaria has a history of machines, as it turns out. Does it? Indeed. Very interesting. That is... Well, that is fascinating. I don't suppose any of this is... Knowledge that's still in the pages of the guide? Oh, sorry, let me answer that for you guys. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... But you it's know, gonna it's... be in mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Are you writing a guide? Guy? I Wait, take did you out say my that enormous out loud? <laughs> uh, did I you write it. about the Nahadra? What I've learned about them so far, yes. Of course. You know, I should probably share this information with Boobin. Well, 
maybe maybe someday. Right now it's best that I stay here. I've I need to make sure nobody hurts Jamio while he can't defend himself. All right. Oh, uh, you should really move your Griffin to MC2. <laughs> Shit, you're leaving you're right. him wide open for an attack here. Oh. <laughs> um, do we want to do a little contested uh, check on the on how the game is going? <laughs> All right, Austin, roll for Pont effects. Oh, okay. Well, you have to roll like five dice. He's got a he's yeah. got a special he has uh, the extra D4. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's like plus eight plus a D four or something like that. How did he ever lose again? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible rolls on your part. Yeah, you, you... <laughs> Let me just check. The, at the very start of this campaign, Brooke had like blessed dice. <laughs> True. And then Oh, they're mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty I good. I just caught up. As as Tin Heart moves the Griffin out of the way so that it won't uh, uh, it won't be captured by another piece, uh, Pontifex chuckles about how he has fallen into his trap and just proceeds to destroy it over the course of the next five moves. Oh no! I gave you terrible advice. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't play. Um. Mr. Tinhart, I know I'm asking you a lot of questions, but before we come back, do you think there's any way you could learn where all these doors go? Because otherwise we'd have to check each one. You want me to check each one? Oh, we could do it with you. Later. Or your robots can. Uh, huh? I made up that word. That is... Pretty good word. It's a good word. They might catch on someday. I don't know, it's... Uh, I could... I could look corny. into it. <laughs> yeah, alright. I'll do that. Didn't Orm say something about a map? Map? Oh! Oh yeah, there used to be a uh, map here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, here, come with me. Um... <gasps> You all head upstairs back on this floor, except for Casimir, uh, who is content where he is. Um, and uh, uh, Tinhart uh, um, fiddles with uh, some kind of contraption that is uh, built into the, the middle wall, the little column here. Um, he opens up basically a couple of panels, uh, and you see him uh, uh, placing small gemstones into empty holes. Uh, and he, he specifically, he, he seems to have a method to it, although nothing is labeled. Um, uh, it's, uh, but but as, he, as he does so, um, the floor beneath your feet lights up. It no longer feels like it's made of uh, of wood, um, and he said it's almost like a glass surface, and the the colors beneath this glass are changing, and they begin to take on uh, uh, mainly two two shades, uh, and soon you realize that you are standing over a map of uh, the continent of Lidaria. I'm going the to... The whole uh, thing? More than you've ever uh, known to be yes. mapped. Oh, oh wait. That, that's the same. <gasps> wait. <gasps> oh! Oh! Uh, let me... Hide the grid. It's like a rhinoceros demon over here. A section... <laughs> <laughs> A section of the floor, uh, which will be over here, uh, flickers and fails to, to fill in. And you see Orm just looking uh, as he's standing right over it. And he gives the floor a couple of kicks and then shrugs. Hmm. And higher... All the way to the west. 
You should probably take a copy of that. Helix. Yeah, let me just trace it on my uh, 500 <laughs> meter square. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one to one. I it feel does. like um, you... This will take a lot of time. As the floor lights up and, and you see this, this enormous map beneath your feet, uh, I think this would be a good moment to end the session. Because I've yes. kept you guys for longer than uh, I had said I would, uh, and I apologize. This is really amazing. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll provide a, a copy of this uh, on the in the actual Discord, so you guys can look at it over time. Now, if the professor has any burning questions, we can still get to them. <laughs> yeah, he'll have he'll have time. Oh. those questions ah, last time. Okay. Uh, I kidnapped your minis, so I'm just going to let you... Uh, actually, I'll keep them here, because we're going to resume in this spot next time. Wow. So, congratulations on dodging the entire dungeon! Um, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with you guys? <laughs> we're pacifists. <laughs> except are. when it comes to white wolves. And sailors. <laughs> And now that you have uh, reunited Saskarin with Orm, and you have uh, uh, heard Orm Tinhart's story, and you, you have a plan for how to uh, follow into Jamiel's footsteps in the future, you all level up. <gasps> oh! Oh, wow. damn. Oh. So proud of you. That's... I'm actually going to be a proper level 5 now. That's huge. <laughs> All nice. right, friends. I'm going to let you go now. Thank you I'm for the to... session. Thank you of for course. the session. The this session. was really cool. Yeah. Man, um, the in the inside the pillar is an elevator, and you guys had to like go upstairs first and go all the way to the <laughs> top, and then take the elevator to the basement. Oh, you know what? Uh, you would have passed. I forgot. Sorry, you would have passed it. Uh, I meant to. I meant to mention it. Um. Uh, Pass what? Uh, hold on. Huh? 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 There's it's a, a border river. Also, oh, <laughs> it's a oh. border room. It's a little small. <laughs> oh, is it a? Oh, is but, it the um, mechanical wyvern? Yeah. Yeah, oh. I figured it would be in here. <laughs> and I, I also had a hunch that it would just be one. Also. Look at these minis! <laughs> yeah. yeah! They're really good. Wait. Hold on, we gotta retcon something. Oh? Talix pet the mechanical wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to roll for that? Perfect. Uh, Machine I, handling. I mean, you just... Oh! <laughs> you know what? Uh, so, you... You felt like it was destiny. You just uh, mm -hmm. uh, reached for it. Uh, you've done this before. You did it with an actual wyvern. So the, the t touching the machine, you don't even think for a moment that it, there could be any issue. And the moment your hand uh, slides across the, the smooth, cold metal scales, uh, the whole thing moves. Boop. And uh, stands Whoa. upright with the wings open wide. Uh, and you can see uh, the, the chest of this machine. Uh, it's empty. There's a compartment with a little door. And, and you realize the inside is just big enough to fit exactly Orn Tinhart's body. Whoa! <laughs> it's a mech suit! <laughs> <laughs> I love Amazing. it. That's a boss fight I don't get to do now. Man. Can we like do a do it's a okay. Ladaria what if? What <laughs> if? You walk in guns blazing, Orm Tainhart cackles from inside his wyvern mech mecha suit. <laughs> he, can, he can just be an ally later and it'll be super cool. <laughs> no, he's not as good when he's fighting on our side. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is. Once you defeat an we enemy and he joins you, he's like <laughs> incredibly so much weaker. Wow. Great session. Matt, mm -hmm. wish you were here, buddy. Yeah. 
I don't know if you're still streaming. <laughs> oh, we are. But, uh, yeah, I haven't seen Matt, Matt in chat. He's looking at houses. Yeah, uh, but yeah probably, let me, probably granting his attention. Let me call the session properly here. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for this midweek session. Uh, I'm glad mm -hmm. we got to play. And me too. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be seeing you guys uh, next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.